Americans in shock as grocery store shelves are increasingly empty. The winter weather surge could keep store shelves desolate even longer. My next guest says he expects these supply chain interruptions to continue over the next six weeks as Omicron cases hit the labor market. Joining me now, Gristides and D'Agostino Foods President, United Refining Company Chairman and CEO, John Katsimatidis. John, great to see you. Just explain what you're seeing and experiencing in terms of the supply chain disruptions, bare shelves. What's the hardest to keep in stock here? Well, it's a multiple uh, choice of items happening. First of all, you have Omicron. Second of all, now you have the weather on top of it. Third of all, you have the price of crude oil is 83, 84, 85, 86 dollars going to. And if Russia uh, uh, shakes a little bit around and, and, and makes believe they're going to attack the Ukraine, you can have $100 oil, and uh, Mr. Putin will be laughing all the way to the bank. So what's happening in our country is Omicron is keeping a lot of people home uh, in, in, the, in the Midwest mm -hmm. and a lot of places, uh, taxing the ability of warehouses to stock the product, uh, load the product, and put it on the trucks to deliver to the stores. Now, what's going on? There's a shortage of truck drivers. So it creates an entire uh, system of problems. You, you have a problem also at the manufacturing level. Uh, we've always had problems with Procter & Gamble, getting enough bounty, getting enough Charmin. Uh, our stores in the Northeast, in New York, we're fully stocked because we have a lot of alternative mm -hmm. suppliers. But Stores in the rest of the country are in deep trouble because you, you, you drive around and, and you see half the shelves are empty. And that's a serious problem. And it's caused by people staying home from Omicron, the weather now, and it's caused by, uh, and the prices are going up. Yeah. So what happens is when you see $83 oil on Friday and going to 85, 86, the prices are going to go up again. They're going to go. We have seen price increases coming in in the food business in February and in March. So there's going to be price increases. And when you have the word, I don't use the word inflation. This is a tax on the poor. This is a tax on the lower middle class because they're the ones paying the price for what's going on in our country. And the White House and Washington has to know that. They got to bring the price of oil down. And the only way you bring the price of oil down, open up Canada, open up Alaska. Why aren't we buying them from them? Well said. John, also, I want to bring up in terms of bare shelves, uh, one thing that causes, infl you know, keeps inflation elevated, or as you said, a tax, is crime. Particularly the the theft here in New York City, the shoplifting and shoplifters who don't get prosecuted. Look no for and then we have a new DA who's going to make matters worse, downgrading felonies. You know this famous memo that he wrote, downgrading felonies to misdemeanors. How much of a problem is that for you to keep your stores stocked? And also, how do you see that contributing to supply problems and inflation problems in the weeks, if not months, to come? Well, let's talk about the crime problem. It is a serious problem, and all Americans. All New Yorkers and all Americans have to put their foot down with their politicians and say enough is enough. And they have to say that keep our city safe, keep our, uh, our country mm -hmm. safe, or else. Now, politicians are scared of one thing, not getting reelected. So the politicians have to be more scared of common sense Americans, common sense, Amer common sense Democrats, common sense Republicans that will band together and say, enough is enough. Let's get rid of the crime. So if our politicians get scared enough of the common sense uh, Americans, then they won't worry as much about the socialists that are, are trying to push our country downhill. Mm -hmm.
Like Governor Kathy Hochul has to be shaking in her heels watching what the new district attorney here in, in New York is doing. It, she can't possibly be on board with it. Over the weekend, uh, Manhattan prosecutors, who some have been there for decades, who prosecuted and, and got important convictions for the people of New York, they're out the door. Their boxes are packed and they're leaving. Some of them don't even have jobs. So maybe she does something about it. But John, I want to get on to bigger picture, well, federal or Washington politics. On your radio show yesterday, former Bill Clinton advisor Dick Morris said there's a good chance we'll see a rematch between Hillary Clinton and President Donald Trump in 2024. He told you uh, Hillary Clinton has positioned herself as the Democratic alternative to Biden and the extreme left in the Democratic Party. She has spoken out against the far left progressive ideas and policies. Your thoughts on a rematch, Trump Clinton? Round two. Ding! <laughs> I believe Hillary Clinton. She's a very, very smart lady. Uh, me and Dick Morris worked with her, her and with Bill Clinton. Me and Dick Morris worked with Donald Trump. I think there's going to be a rematch. I think Hillary Clinton wants to do it. I think she's very smart. She's going to do whatever she has to do because the Democratic Party is out of control. And if Bill Clinton, who's the smartest president I ever met, he advises her and tells her to come center and that she will bring all the moderate Democrats together and bring all the Democratic Party together, they're going to give her the nomination. She's going to run. Uh, Donald Trump, I don't see anybody in the Republican Party that has the ability to stop him. So if those two items are true, you're going to have round two, Hillary versus Trump. I'll add this. So when Hillary Clinton ran the first time, she was running, she wanted to not run on President Obama's record, but how could you do that? How could you turn your back on the outgoing Democratic president who was there for eight years? She could easily run against this record, easily, and have some middle-of-the-road policies. So it, it would be kind of a, a layup for her. We don't know what the next three years are going to look like, but this year, this last year has been a disaster for this Biden White House. Final word to you, Mr. Katsimatidis. Final word, I think she's going to do it. I think uh, Biden uh, does not know what his surroundings are like. He is making the, the, the biggest mistakes of our country's lives. It's costing every American a lot of money. Every mistake that President Biden is making is costing America money. And it, it, she's going to capitalize on that and, and tell everybody she's going to bring America back on her end. And stop calling people deplorables who you don't agree with. Start with that, Hillary Clinton. John Katsimatidis, good to see you. Thank you so much for being Thank here you. this morning.